Welcome back to God's Business, where I interview the top Christian influencers, entrepreneurs, and thought leaders on how you can create not just a good business, but God's business where he is the multiplier of your success. I've been following this guy for quite a while. Probably, I've actually talked to my content team and I'm like, yo, how much content is this guy pushing out? We need to do more than that. <laughs> and he's in a traditional space. I just did an entire office tour upstairs, downstairs, seeing their sales team, seeing the people working. And it's just so cool to see something from social that has so much reach also have such an impact on a level of every single person that works here with multiple companies in seven and eight figures it's an honor to be out here inside of his office as you can tell it's not mine so welcome mr ryan to the show what's up man happy to be here man yeah you got my normal seat so yeah you're good i, I do i've been making myself at home we've been filming content this whole time <laughs> we've been go. shooting reels like you know there I, you go. All of it. So I'm grateful to be here. And it's cool to see your story, dude. Just I see you working in your office and I love it. Like it's that game recognizes game. I'm like, dude, yes, team, sales, you got your event coming up, you yep. got WealthCon coming up. I was just on a two hour call before this. I, I had some other things I was gonna do, and then like it just kept going. <laughs> and but we also get the hair reveal here. Like this is only social and then here. Yeah. Like so for anyone who hasn't seen the new hair color, this, this is, is a hair it. reveal. Uh, it's just straight from the salon, no gel, nothing. Have this you just always been this hair. way though like did you were you ever at one point like con conservative in the way of i can't do this with my hair and oh then you for had a sure breakthrough? yeah Bro. i mean when i was growing up you know my, my dream was to be a baseball player and so like my dad you know who's filipino so he's kind of like a strict asian a little bit he's like dude you, you can't you gotta like look really presentable for the scouts you know your pants gotta fit a certain way you can't like have this baggy stuff and like looking all flashy like you want to like he, he prided himself on image in fact i, I don't know if i've or told a story, but every day before school, he would iron my clothes. And so like, you know, whatever clothes I was wearing, they were ironed and pressed and like looking fresh. So on one hand, I've always like taken pride in my appearance. But on the other hand, yes, it was not what I am today. <laughs> yeah, I, I literally wasn't even allowed to put the gel in your hair that made your hair change colors. Ah. Like my dad was super, That was super like the strict. ice gel. Yeah. Oh, and I loved it too, bro. You get yeah. that fresh cut and then I get the little spikes, yep. with like the blue gel. Yeah. That I, I actually, you can't tell right now, but if I actually had drier hair, I went all the way to Malaysia. Asia, great friend of mine, Peng Jun. We both got our hair done the same time. It's the first time I've ever gotten color in my hair because of how I grew up. That's funny. And I'm 31, so it's embarrassing. My next step is I got to go either purple or red like this. This is this is next level. That's like the hand tattoo. Yeah. They talk about back in the day, that was the you're never going to get a job again tattoo. You have to be committed to entrepreneurship because if you had the hand tattoo, yeah. you had to have all your tattoos underneath. So yeah. I love it, man. And one thing that I noticed with you guys building the business is I, I've seen how faith plays such a big deal. One of my friends goes to your Bible study that you guys do. And oh, nice. And Who is it? Chris Baden. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And so just cool kind of seeing you just forward face that. Maybe it's been just since I've known you. Yet one thing for me is I've seen people that either grow up in a Christian household or not. And no matter what, there has to become this moment where they go from like a believer to like a follower. And it's like real for them. Yeah. And for both sides, I think it's like there's that moment. For you, what was the core moment that really made you represent what you do now, which is like acknowledge him and all you do and he'll make your path straight? Yeah. I see you doing that. What was that like turning point for you where that became like a non-negotiable? You know, it's interesting, right? Because throughout the Bible, there's, it's very clear, like there are levels to faith, right? You know, Paul was getting mad at, I think it was the Corinthians. He's like, you guys are still drinking milk. Like, what are you guys doing? Yeah. You know, it's time to like eat solid food. And you talk about, you know, Jesus talking about, you know, counting the cost and, and bearing your cross and taking it up. And you're like, man, dude, there's a lot that goes into this. And, you know, just like the true look of what discipleship really is, not just like saying I'm a believer, but actually becoming a disciple. And so like you start to understand there are levels to this. And, you know, for me, I was raised in the church. You know, I grew up in a Baptist church right here in Las Vegas. And so, you know, there wasn't like this period where I didn't know who Jesus was or like I was raised in it. I went to yep. Sunday school you know, and, and my testimony's kind of boring because I didn't have this phase where I was like in rebellion. <laughs> you know, I didn't go to college and get drafted and be like, dude, I'm the man. I'm freaking, I don't need God. Like I'm asleep around. I'm going to just go crazy. Like that didn't happen. You know, I, for the most part, obviously I wasn't perfect, but I was pretty faithful throughout my journey, even while I was having, you know, I guess worldly success. And at the time, worldly success wasn't business. It was baseball. It was sports. But, you know, it was interesting because I got engaged when I was 20, 
22 or 23. And my wife was like 19 at the time. And so we got engaged super young and she was actually my first girlfriend ever. So even during that time, you know, of being like, quote unquote, the man, I just always knew like I was just looking for my wife. I wasn't like dating to date. And so, you know, I get engaged and, you know, so we're engaged, we're getting ready to get married and we would have got married sooner, but I had to go play the season. And so, you know, I'm getting ready to go play this season and all of a sudden the Oakland A's release me and they're like, dude, basically you're not good enough, Wow. <laughs> you know, and you're 23 years old. So you, you spent your whole life being told you're the man and your identity is wrapped up in baseball. You know, even though I can say, yeah, I'm Christian and like, I'm doing like I was doing stuff, but in the end, like I still had more of an identity in baseball than I did in Christ. And so to lose that identity and have that crisis for the first time, it was like a big reality check. And especially because I was about to get married. And so like my wife and I are thinking, well, my fiance and I are thinking, yeah, yeah, I'm going to get to the big leagues. That's how we're going to provide. Like that's going to be our life. And then it wasn't. Wow. And so I, I remember like that was the first time in my life I could truly say like I was depressed. I was never, I've always been optimistic. I've always been able to deal with problems and adversity, but I was truly like depressed at that moment. Like, man, what am I going to do? Because at that point, I'll tell you, I was not successful at anything other than baseball. You know, I tried to be a realtor years before. I sucked at it, hated it. You know, I've never, I never made any good money at that point. Minor leagues didn't pay anything. I was literally substitute teaching for $90 a day to make money. So like, I, I really felt like a complete failure who, who had no path forward. So like, that was my first big, like point in my life where I'm like, God, I, I, I don't even know what to do. Yeah. I, I see like Joseph's story. One, you had a dream, but he, what's cool at the end of Joseph's story is he looks back and his brothers think you're going to kill him, kill us. Yeah. And he's like, no, you don't understand. This was Looking back, he could see that that was the path the whole time, that God had put him down that path. I'm also impressed by how excellent he was in everything he did on that path. He wasn't, like, discouraged, yeah, which is just just beyond me. But also, you talked about the identity piece. I was just, I just was talking about this. I was a carpet cleaner. So I had failed a company, and I cleaned carpets. Yeah. It was so difficult. If it wasn't, what is God's identity for you? And I'd love to know how you discovered that because it's tough to break out into something you've never done before if you feel like your identity is based on what's around you. Now that you have the studio and all of this, this, this confirms who you are. You're like, I've made it. But when you have none of the studio, you still have to go out there and know who you are and know yeah. who you are in Christ. Yeah. And I was a carpet cleaner. It was so difficult, man. So I'd love to know what you did and, and what advice you give to people like that because I was like, I'm a carpet cleaner. Why would anyone buy a product from me if I try to sell things online? Yeah. Like I, my identity was wrapped up with the tag on my chest and not, God, who do you say that I am? Yeah. Or, you know, also what's the balance of that delusion <laughs> of I'm, I'm the best, man. God says I'm the best. Yeah, yeah. And And just having that internal confidence knowing that, that I have a bigger identity than just even what I'm doing. Even for you, you have a bigger identity than, than the studio. Yeah. Right. You have an internal identity. So how did you, how did you end up finding that? Cause transitioning careers can be tough, whether someone's 50 or 23. Yep. Your identity is wrapped up in one thing. hundred percent. So, you know, I ended up um, getting released and, you know, in kind of a dark place for a few weeks. And then um, I ended up getting another call from a, a different team. And I didn't even want to play baseball anymore. This wasn't an affiliated baseball with any of the major league teams. And I was like, I'm not going to go play for these teams. And, you know, my fiance, now wife, and my mom and my dad encouraged me, like, you already trained the whole offseason. You might as well go, like, just play. And if this is the last season, at least just go make it the last season. I was like, all right. So, you know, I ended up going out and playing that year. And I played pretty well. And, you know, I had fun. And that led to four more seasons after that. But it was during that time I, I knew I was like, all right, I'm kind of just playing baseball for fun at this point. Like the odds of getting the bigs are not really there. So what am I going to do? You know, I got to provide for my wife. You know, we just got married now. And that led to my whole couch flipping story, you know, for those who don't know. And that was like kind of like the first big God moment where, you know, I'm, I get married. It's October of 2013. So I'm about to celebrate 10 years. And, you know, we'd furnished our whole apartment with all this furniture on Craigslist. We used the money from our wedding gifts to buy 
the furniture and get the apartment and all this stuff. And, you know, I'm, I'm just looking at the furniture one day and I'm like, it just was like, God gave me a vision. He was like, you could just sell this and make money. And I was like, what? And I'm just looking at everything around me and it's like the veil was revealed. And I was like, yeah, I did buy that for a hundred. I could probably sell that for three. And I'm like, that's more than I make substitute teaching. And like, that's easy and that's fun. I enjoy getting deals. So long story short, you know, I, I ended up buying a couch and um, flipped it, made 200 bucks. I was like, dude, this is it. I'm just going to do this once a day, 200 bucks a day, 6,000 a month. Let's roll. That's exactly what happened. You know, I ended up starting this whole furniture business and, you know, I did that for a couple of years. And like, honestly, I thought I was balling. I was like, dude, I'm making eight grand a month. This is crazy. Nobody knows what this is. Like, yeah. There was no YouTube or anything teaching this stuff. Like I just had figured it out. I was like, this is great. But you know, it was a year later after that, you know, God is always kind of like making you take the next step of faith. Right. So I could have been very content and been like, oh yeah, we're good. Like we're making eight grand a month. We have like, we live off nothing. We're very frugal. And I just remember like we're celebrating our one year anniversary. And this was like my next you know, as you would call them, God moment, where I was like, God, you know, it's been a year. I, I'm definitely a provider now. That's not something I was before, but I'm not going to do this the rest of my life. Like, this isn't fulfilling. I know you've built me for way more than this. Like, I have talent. I just don't know what to do. And then I just heard him whisper, real estate. And I was like, real estate? I mean, this is twenty, the end of 2014. I became a realtor in 2010. I had failed that entire time. I had already quit. And I was like, real estate. And then I was like, I don't get it. Well, literally like within the hour, I see a TV commercial. And it's like, you can start real estate investing today with no money and all this stuff. And I'm like, scam. I didn't even like look at it. I didn't even think about the sign. Do you remember who it was? It was one of the TV, you know, gurus yeah, and stuff. Yeah, one of the guys. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, man, this is like whatever. And the, But I couldn't shake it. I was like, yeah. There's no way that like that showed up, whatever, right? So I just Googled it. I'm like, can you buy real estate with no money? Like that never even occurred to me to like think of that. Sure enough, start seeing all these blogs and forums and I see this book and I read it like literally on our vacation. I was like, dang, you can actually do this. Like it's not rocket science. Like there's actually ways to go buy real estate without money. So I ended up um, getting on a plane and my wife and I weren't sitting together because we were too cheap still to like, pay for picking your seat. And so we were in different seats and this old guy sits next to me and, you know, he sees me reading my book. He goes, Hey, what are you reading? I was like, well, I'm reading, um, this book on real estate investing and flipping houses with no money. It's crazy. People need to know this. Like in my mind, I'm like, this is crazy. This is the thing. And he's like, yeah, it is crazy. He's like, you know, I flipped hundreds of homes in my career and I've done those things. I was like, no way. And he's like, son, let me tell you something. And he just like leaned in. He's like, I don't usually talk to people on the plane, but I want you to know that God is telling you that you're going to be very successful in this and you're going to change a lot of lives. And I was like, like I got just goosebumps. Wow. And he's like, I don't usually talk to people on planes and all this, but like God's calling me to encourage you on this. And like, to, to let you know that it's going to work out. And I was like, this is crazy. And so I told my wife when we got back, I was like, we're going to flip houses. I was like, but the only thing is like, we're going to, I need to max out all our credit cards. That's, <laughs> that's the catch. Cause I don't have any money right now. And so we're gonna have to get money from somewhere. There's other ways to get money, but this is the fastest. Yep. So, you know, she's like, all right, you know, <laughs> whatever, let's roll. So, you know, we max out the credit cards and, you know, we do the first deal and I made 25 grand. And obviously there was a lot that went into that, but it ended up working out. And obviously that led to another deal and another deal. And now, you know, we flipped five or 600 homes. We've bought 500 plus rentals and I hated real estate. And so like to see that God brought it all full circle and honestly too, you know, as my life and my faith have evolved and I've, I've gotten closer to being, you know, a better disciple, call it. Um, I now recognize like, man, that guy was giving me like a prophetic word. And that's not something I would have believed growing up, especially like in the Baptist church where, you know, they don't talk about the Holy spirit a ton and they don't, you know, talk about gifts and miracles and healings and prophecy and all these things. And I'm, like, now I look back on it and I'm like, 
dude, that guy literally like was giving me the word I needed. And like now I can like recognize when those things are happening much clearer. Yeah. And, and what that guy gave you not only that word, but released faith and then grace. The good thing about the greatest thing about God's word, especially prophetically like that, is that it also comes with the grace to accomplish it. Yeah. So now you have this like unfair advantage in business, which why I love this show, man. It's like, what an unfair advantage you have knowing the beginning from the end. Like you have a yeah, God like, that you this is going to work. I don't know how it's going to work. Yeah. But it's going to work. And, and just the entire thing of like being faithful with a little and being, and then being put over much. It's like you were flipping sofas, which is crazy, yeah. bro. Like I literally, that's how I got by when I was carpet cleaning. I was, I'd find things on the side of the road that were free. I'd take a picture of it, take yeah. the free sign off and I'd sell it out of their front yard in between jobs. Yeah. Because, and I was just like, my goodness, but it's crazy that those opportunities are out there for people that are just thinking there's no opportunity. It's like, bro, go to free part of free Facebook marketplace, Craigslist, offer up. You can make easily. You could go a couple pick, hundred bucks if you don't have the money to buy it to flip. Yeah, you could get all the stuff for free. Yep, filing cabinets, crazy filing cabinets. My wife, so crazy. she just posted on Instagram like all this stuff in our house that costs like thousands and thousands of dollars. She's like, "Hey, if anyone wants, it, it's free." <laughs> I was like, in my mind, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't care. That, but I was just yeah. thinking in my mind of like the if I was still flipping couches and I saw that, I would be like licking oh, yeah. my chops, and I would have been there like yesterday. Yeah, because where you guys are at now, yeah, the time and efficiency is like not it, the money that you'd well, recoup no, we isn't worth it as well. But also, she's so generous. She's even more generous than me. Wow. And like, she just really wants to bless other people. Like, she'll she'll tell me all the time, like her friends or people that she just you know talks to, and she's like, "We need to like, we need to bless them." And I was like, "What are you thinking?" And she'll be like, "Let's buy him a cruise," and I'll be like. Okay. Like yeah. that came out of nowhere. Yeah, you were like, maybe date night gift card. Yeah, I'm like, like what are you thinking? Yeah. She's like, let's get him a cruise. Wow. And I'm like, okay. And then like somebody else, like, we should put them up in one of our rentals and just whatever, however long is needed. Yeah. I'm like, okay. And I was thinking about like her, her role in the relationship and the influence. I've talked to so many guys that are like, their biggest propeller for success has been their wife. And it's obvious that he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor. This is a promise, right? For a good relationship yeah. that's done correctly. Yet also on top of that, there's that, what's her involvement? Did she push you? Did she encourage you? Yeah. Maybe she pulled it along more well, than that. Well, I'll know. tell you like for Mindy, she's always been just the ultimate like support. Like whatever we wanted to do, she has been the absolute epitome of like, um, <laughs> I mean, I'll say this the Christian way but like the world would take it the wrong way. But like she has a servant's heart. Like she is a pure like servant to whatever it is. The church, me as a husband, you know, like the kids, that's the attitude she takes. And um, she doesn't care about money. She grew up with no money. Literally her parents bought a condo 30 years ago for like 80 grand here in Vegas. They literally lived there for 30 years, wow. paid it off. I've never seen that in my life. Being a real estate guy, I've never seen anybody stay in the same place for 30 years, pay it off, not like refi and do all that stuff. And like, I forced them to move. I was like, guys, we're going to get you new. Like, I can't have you live in this little condo anymore. Also, selfishly, I need you closer to us to go watch the kids. Yeah. So we're going to just buy you a house. So she grew up, you know, with very little. So she's never wanted a lot. Now, today, you go look at her Instagram. She's got freaking... Louis Vuittons and all this stuff. So don't get it twisted. She's not like the most frugal person ever anymore, but she doesn't need it. She doesn't, it's whatever. So when we were growing up or not growing up, but like, um, you know, in the early days of our marriage, we were always super frugal. We never spent money. Even when we became millionaires, I was still driving a $10,000 car. She had like a 20, what, 2007 Toyota Camry, you know, like we were ultra frugal and it was only later that we started like starting to enjoy wealth a little more. Um, but every crazy idea I had, she always supported. I'm like, I'm gonna flip couches. She's like, okay. I'm like, Hey, I'm gonna flip houses. She's like, okay. Like yeah. I'm with it. And then I'm like, Hey, I'm gonna start doing this social media thing. And she's like, I've been telling you to do social media forever. <laughs> like she, she's been watching YouTube since like 2015. I always make fun of her. Cause I'm like, what do you watch on YouTube? Like that's where you go to learn how to tie a tie and all this. Mm -hmm. I'm like, people actually make entertaining, like, vlogs and stuff. That's weird. 
And she was like, yeah, we should film like the house flips and stuff that we're doing. So like we filmed one house flip back in like 2015. It's on YouTube. It's not on my channel. It's on her channel. And it's like me in 2015 being like, yeah, so this is the house we bought. I mean, I, I bought it. I don't know. I didn't, like, I didn't know what I was doing. I'm like, so yeah, that's, I guess this is what we do on YouTube and whatever. So she supported everything I've done and, you know, all the other businesses and stuff. At this point, she's just so concerned just being a great mother and a great um, wife that she don't even know half the things I do anymore because she's just like, it's too much. And she knows too, I don't even want to talk about it. Like when I come home, the last thing I want to do is recap the hundred people I just talked to earlier in the day and like the idiot problems I've got to deal with on a daily basis. Like that's the last, so we don't even really talk about business much. That's interesting. It's yeah. interesting hearing people's dynamic as well. And you talked about her talking about social, the way you talk about it, I'm like, bro, it's such a typical real estate responsive thing. Now that you work with real estate guys, you're like, you know, when you're in an industry long enough, I think it's interesting how you got there. I loved how you heard God say real estate because I got lucky that I went to an internet marketing event. Yeah. So I learned internet marketing. Other guys, they grew up in a place where being a general contractor was like the epitome yeah. or a baseball player. So they just do that. They have the potential to do bigger things, but they just don't know that it's out there. Yeah. For real estate guys, because it's such a, one of the oldest businesses in the world, it, it can be that thing where, I don't care what car I drive, and I don't care what clothes I wear, and yeah. I don't care what phone, or I don't care about the, I the really video. Didn't, yeah, and I didn't care stuff. about any of it. And I mean, if you don't have anyone else showing you that, <laughs> but that's a typical, every time I talk to real estate people, one of my biggest clients was that I had one real estate client that got me a bunch of real estate clients when I had a weight loss product. Okay. And so it was always the same thing. But you then made the transition, obviously, even managing people's social and showing them. I, I love the the verse that says let your light shine before men in such a way that they will see your good works and glorify your father that's in heaven one of my favorite that verses. is the only verse that kept me on social even for me i was like i don't need to be on social right so why do it and it just it was difficult and i remember reading a book and it quoted that and i was like this is the social media verse where where can i let my light shine yeah the, the and, brightest and that's one thing I've thought about a lot that verse because, you know, obviously a social went on and as business success grew, um, you know, a lot of times it can be easy to um, come off as like, I don't know, boisterous or whatever the case is, right? And you're like, does this glorify God? And then, you know, you see the results of all these people showing up to events and, you know, lives being changed and the DMs and you're like, all right, this is this is definitely a good thing. And it, it, it always comes back down to your intent, right? And it's like, you know, what's the intent? Is it like to, to glorify me and like, you know, show off or is it like, Hey, I'm trying to help people. And in doing that, you know, people are going to see what God's doing through me. And, um, you know, it's, it, it, it's a tough balance, especially for Christians and, and, and for money, you know, when Christians start talking about money, it gets, um, weird. And, you know, funny thing about the internet marketing stuff is <laughs> I, uh, you know, I was a real estate guy. So I was like old school, and, you know, I got on social in 2020, like hardcore. And, you know, I had a bunch of people message me in like 2021 because I had built a seven figure, you know, uh, internet business. And people are like, yeah, dude, you're like, you're doing really good. There's a lot of my friends in the IM space, um, you know, asking me how, how you do your social and all this stuff. And I'm like, what is the IM space? And they're like, it's internet marketing. That's what you are. I was like, so what does that even mean? They're like, dude, you're, you're an internet market. You're a direct marketer. You know, you have coaching, you have high ticket offers. And I'm like, oh, I didn't realize that was a name for it. And then like I had this flashback um, years prior. I actually had Perry Belcher walk into my office. He's here in Vegas. And this was like in 2019. So I wasn't even doing internet marketing. And he's like, yeah, dude, I'm, you know, I'm with digital marketer and stuff. And run this event called like traffic and conversion and stuff. And I'm like, okay. And he's like, you've never heard of it. Yeah. Never uh, heard of it. <laughs> I was like, no. He's like, you don't know who I am. I'm like, no. And just like, he was, he was dumbfounded. He was like, all right. You know, like, but that, that's been my career. I'm like, I, I just don't know what I don't know. I'm like, people get paid on YouTube. Like that was my thought in 2020. And then I watched a video, how much my now friends were making on YouTube. And I was like, People get paid that much on YouTube? Are you kidding me? I'm out here like flipping 50 houses to make that much money. 
They're doing, they're just sitting in front of a camera by themselves with no risk, no overhead, no employees. I'm like, I'm in the wrong business. But you not only did it, <laughs> you now you get to inspire other people to do it, which I think is cool. Because again, if you had, if you, all your real estate mentors were doing it, yeah, you would have done it. And so now you have this opportunity that you had to go through the hard stuff, but now you're, you have the digital side, you have the physical side, you're hosting an event. Yeah. The event's going to do well because there's event blueprints of exactly how you run events. There's yep. going to be people there that want more of your guys' stuff. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that you said that was interesting, and I say it in a great way because you do share your success, right? You go to your Instagram bio, you could see things that you've done, you watch your videos, you'll talk about whatever. Yeah. If, if someone truly believed that God did something, so like let's say they had no leg and their leg came back, they they would share it easily because they truly believe that they didn't have any part of it. Right. And I believe, and maybe this is just something to ask you, if a Christian's scared to share because they're scared to be boisterous, maybe it's because they actually think they had something to do with it. Mm. Because it, when they actually don't think that they had something to do with it, like that they just played their part, but even the gifts, talents, abilities, true humility, actually believing it, I don't think they would, no one would be like, my leg just grew back. I don't want to tell people because that would be boisterous that I grew my leg back <laughs> just when it wouldn't happen. Yeah. And so I, I appreciate that you do that. Cause it's a, it's a struggle for me, but even going internal for me, I'm like, is there parts of me that kind of feel like I am kind of cool or like I did do that? Yeah. You know, cause if it was truly a miracle or even just, I gave all glory, I feel like it wouldn't be that scary. Yeah. You know? So I don't know if you have any thoughts on that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I never thought about it that way where, you know, I didn't want it to come off as like me saying I did this. Um, I think really like what it comes down to is this. For those who are scared to talk about what they're doing and to be on social media or whatever, it's like, okay, one, do you believe in like your message, right? Okay, if you do, that's step number one. If you don't, then obviously don't say it. Two, do you believe in like the product that you sell? Like if you think you legitimately have the best product, I mean, obviously you're doing not only your company a disservice, but you're doing right. the customers a disservice by not telling them about it, right? Because they're going to go buy an inferior product, whatever the case is, right? So you have an obligation to actually talk about it and sell. Three, you know, as Christians, right? We're all, we're all part of the body. We're all given unique talents and abilities, circumstances, situations, and God calls us to use those to glorify him. And so... There are some people who are meant to be pastors, and that's their role in the body. There are those who are meant to be missionaries. There are those who are meant to be the people that finance all of those things, right? You know, there are those who are meant to have their ministry on social media, in the marketplace. Like, you know, at the end of the day, if we're believers, like, there's a ministry for us. It's not just going to church every Sunday. You know, so identifying what the, the the ministry is for you is super important on your circumstance because, you know, you, what they have a saying is like, God doesn't call like the equipped. He, he just like calls you yeah. Yeah. and like, you're, you'll be ready. Yeah, you know, he qualifies he the call. Yeah. He qualifies the called. And it's like, it's exactly what happens. I'm like, I had no experience on social media making videos or figuring it out. You know, in 2020, I had, I think like, 8,000 Instagram followers, and that was it. No YouTube, none of this stuff, wasn't making videos. I was not qualified at all. But I felt like God was calling me during the pandemic to put out these videos because a lot of people were struggling. They didn't know what to do. You know, in fact, for me, I had like 50 house flips going on when COVID hit. And it's like, man, am I going to go out of business? Like, I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> like, if the real yeah. estate market tanks, who knows? Um, but I felt like he was calling me to like make videos. And I'm thinking, make videos? Like that's the thing I should be doing right now. Like there's probably other things that could help my business and like whatever. But sure enough, making videos was like the perfect thing to do during that time. You know, it's like everybody's stuck at home. They're all watching YouTube. They're all watching social media. They don't know what's happening. And so it was like literally maybe the best time in history to start making videos. I know there's things that we hold on true, like we choose our path and God directs our steps or like he's a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. What do you think has allowed you to preemptively kind of accidentally 
you kind of accidentally got into real estate. Yeah. You kind of jumped into it early as a realtor, failed, and then now you succeed in the area that you were shambles. Yeah. You know? Like there's, you know, part time moms that are pregnant that make more money than you did as a realtor. So yeah. Like that sell three homes a year in Orange County and they make six figures. So yeah. Like didn't do well in that. And and, and then now in it, what do you think there's obviously some accidental is there anything that you did to kind of align yourself or put yourself in the crosshairs to preemptively do that? Was it all accidental? And you look back now and you're like, man, I can't believe God told me to get on social or part of it where you like, God's calling me to get on social right now because it's 2020 and there's some plan to this. Well, I think as time has gone on and I've seen him work and like, I can now recognize it. Whereas yeah. before it's like, it happens for the first time and you're like, is that God? Like, I don't, we'll see. And then, you know, work, you're like, all right. Then, you know, it happens again. You're like, I think that was like last time. And then you you do it again. Right. Yeah. And then, you know, I think by the time 2020 hit and the social thing happened, I was like very confident. I was like, oh yeah, I know what to do. Like, I'm going to crush this. And so, you know, I think that if you want to hear from God, there's, things that you have to do to be ready to receive it, right? Because I'll tell you this, and we've talked about this in our Bible study. You know, if you're caught up in like addictive sin and just, you're, you're just in this constant state of defying God, even if you call yourself a believer, you're not going to hear from God. You know, if you're, if you're getting drunk every night, if you're doing drugs, if you're sleeping around, you know, even if you're living with your girlfriend and you're sleeping like together and you're, you're calling yourself a Christian, like, It's going to be very difficult to hear from God, okay? If you don't go to church, you don't have fellowship, like, why would God speak to you? How is it going? You're, like, you're closing yourself off spiritually. But if you're doing all the things that the Bible tells us to do, right? Hey, you should read your Bible. You should pray. You should fast. You should get in fellowship with other believers. You should be discipled. You should also be discipling somebody else. You should have other people to hold you accountable, you know, you start doing the things the Bible tells you to do, it starts to become much easier to receive what God is trying to tell you. And it may not be God even whispering it to you. It might be literally coming out of my mouth right now for exactly what you needed to hear. Yep. It might be from your pastor at church that Sunday. It might be, you know, something somebody tells some, you. Some dude on an airplane. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> but but you have to be ready to receive it, right? And it's not yeah. to say that God won't speak to you if you're just totally like far gone. That that happens too. Yeah. But I'm gonna tell you, it ain't gonna happen like frequently. Yeah, yeah. It's like there's a every scripture that has a promise. There's always that like contingency. So knowing it, it's like all things work together for good. And people are like, okay, God's got it. All things work together for good. It's like for those who love God. And then also another scripture says, if you love God you'll obey my commands. Like, if you love me, you'll obey my commands. It's a fruit of it. If then. Yeah, it's like, okay, well, these are great. And and that's why I bring it up is because people could look, well, that's great timing. It's like, well, he's also aligned himself in this way that God's promise is, this is how it's supposed to be. End of story. Being a business owner, though, wasn't that cool. I remember my dad used to pick me up in a carpet cleaning van because he ran a flood restoration company. Yeah. And I was so embarrassed at school. I was like, dad, why you gotta bring the work truck, right? So being a business owner was never like, a great calling, at least at the time. And now we see marketplace ministry for you being a Christian growing up. I didn't grow up Christian. Yep. Was there ever a time that you felt like as you became more successful in real estate that you're kind of like, am I doing my calling or should I become a pastor? Because you talked about this realm now, but I could imagine that that's a difficult thing for people is like knowing, should I be doing missions? Like, should I be? Yeah. So... And who knows, you still might become a pastor, so, but not yet. Well, I'll tell you this, you know, in regards to being a pastor, I'm never going to rule anything out. And it's funny because basically when I was a young kid, I, I kind of always told my parents like one day I'd be a pastor, but in my mind it was always going to be after baseball was over. And then I would, that'd be like the second stage of my life. And then like that went away for a long time. It was like, all right, I'm going to do business and this is my ministry. And, and business definitely is my ministry for sure. Um, but it's funny because like, you know, and this is like hearing from God, you start, like, I always start to see signs. Um, and the signs aren't like, like weird signs I see in like 
freaking readings or anything. It's like people say things. And that's actually, so like to give an example, that's what happened with social media back in 2020. I had three people within 24 hours tell me I should do YouTube. I was like, this is not a coincidence. Like I need to look into this. Like I've been down this road before with God trying to tell me something because I'll hear it the first time and I won't receive it. And I'll be like, eh, whatever. I hear it again. I'm like, all right, I'm kind of listening. Let me, I might look at it and then I hear it again. I'm like, all right, fine, I'll do it. I don't want to do it. I did not want to make YouTube videos. I did not want to do real estate, you know, like, but, you know, it's like I had to be obedient to what God wanted me to do. And I would have never imagined, by the way, that social media for me anyways would have moved as fast as it did in such a short period of time. So for sure, all God. But back to um, just like signs and everything else with being a pastor. Um, I ended up uh, just talking about, you know, we launched this thing called Wealthy Kingdom um, two months ago. And so I'm so excited for about it. Um, it's basically this um, online community for Christian entrepreneurs and business people and you know, we, we've already done a mission trip to Mexico. Um, this month we've got a men's retreat, um, where we're going to go like fishing and ATVing and all this stuff. Um, we're gonna have a massive event. We're gonna, we're launching 40 Bible studies in two weeks nationwide. And we're going to launch, um, hundreds more as time goes on and maybe thousands. Like, so this is going to be my big, big ministry, big nonprofit. Um, our nonprofit status is pending for those wondering, by the way. Um, and so like, I'm super passionate about it, but you know, like my guy who's helping me, his name is Chris. He's kind of heading it up right now. He works for me. And, um, he's like, dude, you've been talking a lot about like retiring from business and, and being like a pastor. He's like, I'm starting to like, you know, n not like be concerned, like jokingly, like, am I going to have a job tomorrow? Like, you know, that's kind of like where, where he was going with it. I was like, I haven't even noticed myself talking about that. Right. Then. We had um, our weekly call for Wealthy Kingdom, and I had one of our pastors, Jabin, on. And he's like, I, I, I wasn't even on. Like, I came on for like 10 minutes to hear it. And he was like, yeah, you know, he was basically talking about the ministry thing. And he's like, you know, Ryan's not a pastor. Um, he, he's doing his ministry. Well, he's not a pastor yet anyways. And that you never know. But for now, his ministry is in business. And then my wife told me, you know, and, and my wife, I think... She has something that I've never, I don't have. Um, and I don't even think she really fully understands it either, but she sometimes has dreams where she sees things. And um, I don't have that at all. I don't remember anything from the night before. But she was like, I saw this, like, in my dream, you were speaking in front of, like, tens of thousands of people, and you were preaching, and, like, you were a pastor. And I was like, all right, well, <laughs> that settles it. Like, I don't know when it's going to happen or how it's going to happen or, but that seems like the signs are there. And what a power, the powerful example of a healthy marriage. Women have that. My wife dreams all, she's told all her friends when they're pregnant before they're, they've mm. told anyone. And then pretty much every major business move I've made for the most part was her. When I started yeah. podcast 2016, when I started running live events, None, I did it, but like none of it was actually really my idea. She told you. She was the one who had it first. And then I was like, okay. And then we kind of run it and that'd be like the direction. Yeah. So it'd be cool. I'm, I'm interested to see how that goes. Uh, like we need this guy who can, where's Daniel? Where's, where's all the dream interpreters? Yeah. 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 Please come <laughs> on. Help me out here. Is this real? Is this not? Yeah. And th th I mean, even that, man, there's so much to that. You look at Solomon. Solomon got spoken to in a dream too. Yeah. And he woke up and he instantly started sacrificing, giving thanks. Yeah. And I'm like, how often do we have a dream? And we're like, hmm, I don't even know if I'll tell anyone or yeah. I'm not even going to write it down. Bro, I once had a dream that I wrote. I had a dream that God was speaking to me. So in my dream, I had a dream. <laughs> okay. God spoke to me and then I didn't write it down and I forgot. Mm. And I remember waking up and being like, I forgot what God said to me. Yeah. And then I woke up from the dream. Yeah. And I've literally tried to write down everything now since then. This mm. is like 12 years ago. Wow. 13 years ago. Because I, I was so afraid. If I don't write it down, why is he going to speak to me if I don't remember it? Yeah, you don't. Very, yeah. yeah. I, I can I can say God has never spoken to me in a dream. Um, I do not have that spiritual gift. At least not yet. Who knows? But um, he has definitely given me visions of 
wherever, like where, wherever I was at that moment, like I was doing something and like, just, it, it became clear. It was like, whoa. And I actually just had that recently happen. I shared it with um, our Bible study yesterday about um, building this Christian retreat center and buying this land and building this, this golf course country club community for um, Christian entrepreneurs. And like, it was clear as day of how it was going to play out and how the golf course would fund the retreat center. Because like, I, I've heard a lot of people say, Oh, I want to start this Christian retreat center. And then like, I just don't even know how to make it, make it make sense financially where to raise the money. I'm like, it just became crystal clear to me. I just start a golf course. Like I can easily go do that and I can get members and I can use those dues. I can use the funds from selling the land to then, you know, fund the retreat center too. And then guess what's going to happen when everybody knows it's for a cause, you're going to attract the right kind of people into that country club. And so now you basically by default created this amazing, <laughs> maybe I'll call it kingdom country club. I don't know. But like that, that for sure is like, I know for a fact that is going to happen. And all the skills that you've acquired leading up to this is also what's going to make it successful. Yeah. Like literally really it's cool. all on the table. Like there's literally no reason it can't happen. Yeah. Because like, I know what to do. So my last two things are so polar different. One is like the craziest God kind of spiritual experience that you've had. And then the second one is the biggest business mistake that you made and what you learn. Mm. Uh, just cause we talked a lot about success stuff. Yeah, yeah. And even for me, I'm like, I, yeah. I once did Instagram management for someone in like 2014 and like totally flopped. Bro, you've been in this a long time, the Bro, social media game. I've also been married for 11 years too. <laughs> I got married at 20 and 18. Yeah, uh, My wife was 18. But yeah, that, in it for a long time for sure. So for you, one, just like something that God's done that you're like, wow, that was crazy. Yeah. And then also let's get one good, good mistake that you made on the business side. <laughs> Dude when it comes to mistakes, like just ask me what happened that week. And I'll be like, Oh man, dude, let me tell you about this stupid thing that I did or somebody else did or man. Um, so to go with the bad, cause we, we should always end on a good note. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's do the bad. And then we'll end yeah. The so note. to, to go with the bad, man, look, it's so easy to just point to like things that lost money. And so like, I've had plenty of flips and bad deals that have lost me like literally accumulative millions of dollars. And it sucks, dude. It sucks. Like some of them were in my control. Some were out of my control. The market shifts, you know, they decide to double interest rates and you're kind of like, you're holding all these properties. And when you're a big business and like you, you get hit harder than, you know, what, you know, somebody else would. So, you know, I've lost a lot of money on house flips. Um, I've gone through a lot of heartache and problems in partnerships I've had to get rid of. Um, and I'll tell you one of the common themes that I've really been preying on. And, you know, one of my friends, Blake, um, who's actually our podcast host um, for Wealthy Kingdom podcast, he sent me a verse the other day about like um, yoking up with believers and things that you do. Because I was actually asking a few of my mentors, I'm like, do you think that like, I should only partner with Christians, you know, cause that's a tough decision. Like, you know, we, we've got a lot of non-believers who work for me, but they, they all carry Christian values, you know, at least in the workplace. But a lot of the problems came from my, my partnerships with non-believers. And I was like, man, that's, that's a lesson I still have not fully come to terms with. Um, but, you know, when you start a lot of businesses, inevitably, you're going to have more problems and you're going to have ones that just don't work out or even some that they work out, but they're no longer worth the time because now you're doing bigger things. So I've had to go through all that. But I like I like for people to know that the bigger the business, the bigger the problems and the more problems, but your capacity has grown over time where that what bothered you five years ago let's say the one flip that lost 20 grand. Yeah. You'd be like, all right, like on to the next one now because yeah. your capacity grows. I've always been super impressed by that. I look at some of my friends that run bigger companies and I'm like, you have a lot bigger problems. You have a lot more of them, but your capacity, it's just like, yeah, if you 100%. just grow over time. Yeah. And I actually, so the first big problem I went through in 2018 in regards to that, it was basically, let's call it a million dollar problem, right? Like I had a million dollar hole 
that I had to figure out how to fill because of losses and other things. And so that was super scary. I'd never had that big of a problem, you know, and I didn't have the money to fix it. I had to figure out how to get creative to fix it. And so, you know, end up fixing it, solving that problem, you know, then, you know, you graduate and you have a $10 million problem. I'm like, holy crap, this is a big liability. How do we fix this? I mean, you know, don't have this cash just sitting on the sidelines ready to like, how do we fix this? And so you got to get creative and fix it. And I'll tell you, as I was going through that problem, the thing I was thinking about was, you know, at that time, I think Elon Musk had just like been forced to buy Twitter and he had like a $40 billion problem. (laughs) And I'm like, you know what? My problem's not that bad. Elon Musk gets the right to have a $40 billion problem, you know? So if I can't solve a $10 million problem, how am I going to solve a $100 million problem, right? So, you know, in the end, um, you know, get past that. And inevitably, as I grow, I'm going to have, hopefully, a $100 million problem yep. that I've got to solve. And Elon's problem just got a little bit bigger, bro. Yeah, they <laughs> just, just released got- threads. So, like, Elon's $40 billion problem is, like, a big problem. It's it's a big problem now. Yeah. Okay, so th- we got past the bad part. I'm glad you didn't add it on the bad, end it on the bad. Just yeah. a spiritual experience that you've had, a place where God's just something something that stands out to you, where he's spoken to you, said something, something's happened, something crazy you saw. Yeah. Um. I mean, I've, I've kind of talked about a few instances, but another Bro, one- we talked about some good ones, too. Yeah, now. another one would be, and like, honestly, too, now that I like look back at hindsight and all these things, I'm like, wow, that's crazy like that. I've heard from God that many times. Um, but, you know, the other one was actually how The Wealthy Way, um, the basically our brand of everything now got started. You know, basically, for, for those who don't know, The Wealthy Way is just a, you know, it, it's it's a foundation of for how you should live your life, right? You should be able to be, you know, strong both spiritually, physically, financially, relationally. You know, it, it's going through the process of how I have balance in life and how I, you know, can do all the things I do because people ask me like how the heck do you run all these businesses and do all these things and spend time with your like how I'm like well it's called the wealthy way right and so I just documented everything that I do anyways that vision for that came about almost two years ago you know we I was at actually at a retreat men's retreat Christian retreat two years ago and one of the things that we do is it's out in the woods and on the last day we go out by ourselves for an hour and you can bring your Bible, a journal, whatever. And you just, they, there's no instruction. It's like, just sit out there and listen to God. And so at the time, I'm like, all right, I have no idea what I'm supposed to do, but let's go. So I'm just sitting out there and praying. I'm like, God, reveal whatever it is you want me to do next. You know, at this point, you know, I, I've accomplished a lot in business, but. Whatever you want me to do next, I'm open to it, right? So he ends up just speaking to me about, you know, it wasn't called the wealthy way or anything yet, but he's like, I want you to create a, basically a blueprint for how people are supposed to live life as entrepreneurs because they don't know. Too many of them are ending up divorced. Too many of them have terrible health. Too many of them have no faith at all. Like, I want you to write the blueprint for how they live. And I want you to, be the example to them so that they want to actually follow the blueprint. And I was like, okay. I was like, so is this going to be like a new coaching program? Like, what is the, am I going to create another mastermind? He's like, no, you're going to do it for free. And I was like, oh, okay. That sounds great. I'm just going to go and build this whole thing. That's going to take so much time and effort and I'm just going to give it away. And he's like, yep. Like, all right. So, yeah, I literally worked the, the second half of the year and, you know, I built out the course. Um, I built out this planner. We built an app. We built um, everything. Obviously, I wrote the book. Um, and then we rebranded everything into Wealthy. And um, it was crazy, man. It was crazy because I think we had 30,000 people download it in the first, like, week. I was like, wow, 30,000 people are about to go through this. And they don't realize it's a bait and switch. It's like they think they're learning about becoming rich, and then they're just getting hit with the gospel. And so, you know, if you didn't know, now you know. But, um, yeah, it was an interesting thing because I thought about it first going from the Christian perspective of like, hey, I want to help Christian entrepreneurs. That was always on my heart. But God was like, no, you have to do this first. You have to do this thing for everyone first. And then, obviously— 
the Christian entrepreneur thing came later with Wealthy Kingdom. But, you know, everything's like timing with God. It's like, dude, I have all the like, I want to do that golf thing like right now. But I know the timing isn't right this moment. So good, bro. I, I've been inspired by how you put God in business together, even in the decision making, stuff like that. And these are applicable things. People can do that right now. Take an hour, go listen to God, leave the phone. It's so difficult. Anyone can do it. Phone. Yeah. It's like and, literally just, just don't be near Netflix and your phone and you can go do it. And the testimony that you gave is, is biblically the spirit of prophecy that God speaking to you gives them an opportunity because you told us the story. I appreciate it, man. I'd love to get people connected we talked about wealthy way. You talked about wealthy kingdom. Yeah. If you could kind of steer people of socials the best or a specific place where, where they should grab something. I mean, something. If, if, if this is a Christian podcast and you know, there's a lot of Christian entrepreneurs watching, I'd love to have all of you in wealthy kingdom. Um, that's my main focus. So you can go to wealthykingdom.com. It's literally 600 bucks for the entire year. I, I literally lose money on it as of today. And you know, the goal is to just grow the kingdom and grow that community to just massive, massive levels. And we're going to plant local Bible studies for everyone to be a part of, um, worldwide. Like it's going to be crazy. I think one of the best things that people can do is invest in something like that, yeah. especially if they're into finance where your money is your heart is also. And I think more so when you're, if you're going to be attracted to anything that says wealthy, you're probably somehow in a place where you feel like you should be a big giver yeah. or a big producer. I, I just think there's something to the commitment. And if that's some place that people are like, they get this far into the show and yeah. they're like, okay, well, this is, I like this. Well, where your money is, your heart is also. Yeah. So will you take something that's less valuable and put it into something that's more valuable, something that gets you committed to show up, something that at, something that you care about that you're giving to get something even better? Mm -hmm. So I think it's a it's a no-brainer for everyone that's that's looking at it. Yeah. It's like like you you're part of a country club. It's like you golf because you're like, well, I pay to golf. So like even when you don't feel like it, you're like, well, I'm, I might as well just go golf and, <laughs> yeah. and you get better. And like, what about when you don't feel like diving into the word, well, but I, you're I, now committed to it because you have this process in front of you and investment? Yeah. I mean, I spend more money on golf in a weekend than Wealthy Kingdom for a year. So like <laughs> <laughs> that, when you start comparing it to like the things that we do and we spend money yep. on where it's like, all right, you know, you got to check your heart sometimes. Awesome. Well, everyone go check that out as well as following you on social as well. Yep. I'll have everything linked below, but I appreciate it, man. Thanks for cutting out the time yep. and going over as well. This was awesome. Yeah. Thanks for having me, dude.